Hey, hey, good morning, everybody. If you're um, watching later, I'm just going to say welcome to day 13 of our prayer and fasting. And um, thanks, if you're alive, thanks for joining me early on a Saturday morning. I am not a morning person. I don't know if anybody on here is a morning person, but I'm not. But here we are, early, early, early in the morning. And I just wanted to ask how the fasting is going for you guys. I'm doing um, a partial fast. So I'm only eating between 1 and 7. And then also I am fasting Diet Pepsi, which is my most favorite thing in the world. And this has been really hard, um, fasting Diet Pepsi, because I love Diet Pepsi. Hey, good morning, Dana, and good morning, Doug, and Anita. Um, I'm not very good at watching the comments, so... If I don't say good morning, um, please don't take it personally. <laughs> I is only like, I think maybe my second time doing a Facebook Live, so I'm not even really confident in the, you know, working the system here. So anyway, but I want to tell you a little story while we wait for um, a couple others to join. So I just said I was, I was fasting Diet Pepsi. And so I think it was Tuesday, I went to Donato's and, um, you know, Went to Donato's, walked in, ordered my pizza, ordered my Diet Pepsi because to me, nothing goes better with pizza than pop. Drank my Diet Pepsi, ate my pizza, and as I was leaving, I was like, oh no, I just broke my fast. So, you know, I was thinking, well, I broke my fast, I might as well just give up and forget it and um, drink Diet Pepsi because I really miss it. And then I was thinking, not so fast, devil. Get behind me, Satan. You know, it's <laughs> the devil does that. He likes to um, use those your thoughts to derail you. So I just want to encourage you, if you've messed up and you're fast, it's okay. Just start again. So that's what I did. Started again. So I guess I broke my fast for an hour while I ate my pizza. Um, but anyway, didn't mean to do that. Anyway, that's not why we're here today. Today, we are here to talk about um, serving little ones, childlike faith. And we're going to be our verses, Matthew 18, 4 through 5. But first, I want to tell you about um, a story of a little boy, John, who was sick. And so he went to the doctor and the doctor, wanting to cheer him up, played some games as he examined him. So the doctor took out that little device that checks the ear. I don't know what it's called. I'm sure there's a name for it, but he took out that device to check the ear and looked into John's ear and said, John, is that Mickey Mouse in there? And John thought that was so childish, so he didn't reply to the doctor. So then the doctor uh, shone a light into John's mouth and he says, John, is that Donald Duck in there? And again, John felt that was so childish, so he didn't answer. And then the doctor put the stethoscope on John's chest and he listened and he asked, John, is Spider-Man inside? And John this time replied, he said, no, Jesus is in my heart. Spider-Man is on my underwear. <laughs> so I hope you thought that was funny. I thought that was funny. <laughs> children, you know, kids say the funniest things and they're so cute. And yet at the same time, children can teach us wonderful things about the spiritual life. There can be um, lessons to learn from children about the kingdom of God, and that's exactly what Matthew 18 is. And so I just want to um, set it up a little bit. And, and from the Gospel of Mark, we learn that Jesus precipitated this conversation by asking the disciples what they had been discussing among themselves earlier. And this is where they were arguing about who would be the greatest. And so I'm going to start at verse 1. And it goes like this. Matthew 18, verse 1. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a little child to him and placed the child among them. And he said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. And here's verse 4. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. You know, Jesus used a child to illustrate for his disciples how they should think and behave. And we're not to be childish like the disciples were arguing over petty issues and 
stuff like that, but childlike with humble, sincere, and trusting hearts. And I want to read, I have a um, study Bible, so I kind of, I want to read what they say about um, these verses in Matthew 18. So from my study Bible, it says, the disciples had become so preoccupied with the organization of Jesus's earthly kingdom that they had lost sight of its divine purpose. Instead of seeking a place of service, they sought positions of esteem. It's easy to lose our eternal perspective and compete for promotions or status in the church. It is difficult but healthy to identify with children who are weak and dependent people with no status and no influence. And so when I was thinking about this, um, I wanted to, I guess, point out a few ways that you can identify with children. When I think of children and I think of little ones, I think of words like we read in here, like dependent, vulnerable, trusting, loving. Um, they need their parents. You know, they can't imagine a life without them. And even when they get in trouble, I know when Kate gets in trouble and she gets disciplined, she always comes back to us for a hug. You know, she doesn't stop reaching out to us because we are her place of comfort and safety. And God wants us to be childlike at heart, you know, quick to run back to him when we fall short. Um, and we should receive God's discipline like a child. You know, when we run back to God, we're acknowledging our dependence on him as a father who loves perfectly and knows what's best for us. So like being dependent, vulnerable, trusting and loving on God shows we are childlike at heart. Um, I read there was this study, I think it was um, Stanford medical study where MRI scans showed more significant brain activities when children under the age of 12 heard their mother's voice in comparison with the voice of strangers. You know, that makes me feel special and more connected to Kate, you know, uh, makes me wonder how God might feel when we value his voice. You know, I believe God appreciates us valuing his voice and is very pleased with us each time we choose to obey his voice. Um, you know, valuing God's voice increases our ability to recognize his voice and daily become like him. And, you know, it's so important to study and obey God's word and seeking to know what God is saying concerning all our plans are some of the ways that we can show that we value God's voice. And it got me thinking, you know, what voices influence our decisions? You know, voices of strangers or is it the voice of popular media influencing our decisions? Or is it God's word, the strongest influence in our lives? Question to ponder. Um, when Kate was younger, she doesn't do it so much anymore, but when Kate was younger, she every morning she would run into our room and she would seek me to assure herself she wasn't alone, you know, get a little hug, get a cuddle, ask for food, of course. But what she understood was that she needed her you know, mom and dad first thing in the morning. And so it got me thinking, how can I expect God to order my steps throughout the day if I don't seek him before I go about my day? You know, isn't it important for God to be the first thing on my mind every morning? And, you know, if what would each day look like if I consistently seek God, despite, you know, sometimes we, we have a busy schedule, but, you know, if I consistently seek to seek God first, you know, what would that do? You know, God understands that we have a busy schedule and life can be busy, but he wants us to understand that our day would be better when we started off by acknowledging that we need him. You know, you could start each day with a simple, thank you, Jesus, for today. Or you can be like, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it and be glad in it. This is the day. Did your mom ever sing that song to you? My mom sang that song to me a lot, but... It just shows put God first each day. Um, you know, God is our source of comfort and his presence brings us comfort and we get to carry God's presence everywhere. You know, we could be comforted anywhere. We don't have to wait for Sunday for comfort. The Holy Spirit, who is the comforter, lives in us and he is there for us always. Um, Sunday, I got to be I got to cover for a preschool teacher who had to leave early. So I was in the preschool class for the last 15 minutes of class. And um, yeah, I always learn something from these little ones every time, every Sunday, every time I'm with them. But anyway, we were in this class, I was in the class, the preschool class. 
and they their theme was God always helps us. And so I said to little three-year-old Bristol Pisani, I said, she is the cutest little thing. She has personality plus. But anyway, I said to her, I said, Bristol, does God always help you? And you know what? Without missing a beat, she looks up at me and she says, yes, he follows me everywhere. And that just blessed my soul, touched my heart. Little Bristol pisani has got it. She knows it. She knows what to do. She knows that God's presence is everywhere. You know, God is our source of comfort and he wants us never to forget that. And you will always be his child. No one, no one can comfort you like the heavenly father. And, you know, little children, they like to explore. So they're curious about the world around them. And curiosity is a childlike characteristic that we all need. Um, spiritually, we must be hungry for the truth and keep seeking to know God's heart. We should not assume we know everything about the Bible. I don't know anybody who does, but we should not assume that. There's always more to discover, and a humble heart is always curious. You know, sometimes while exploring their environments, little kids can engage in dangerous activities. You know, they could consume and touch harmful things, and you, this could be considered childish behavior. And spiritually, it signifies a lack of discernment. You know, consuming everything without weighing its impact on our spirit and soul is childish. All right? We cannot lack discernment. And I know you've heard the same. My mom, I'm talking a lot about my mom, but my mom used to always say this too. Garbage in, garbage out. I'm sure some of your parents probably said that too. And it's so true. You know, ask, I like, ask yourselves, what are the books, the movies, the TV shows? What are they doing to our spirit, soul, and body? Are they filling us up with like um, comparison or fear or ideas that contradict the truth? You know, it's very important for us to spend personal time studying the Bible. And when we do this, God's word is in our hearts and can help us discern false teachings as we encounter them. So we have to, we must spend time in God's word so we can discern the stuff the enemy tries to plant in our hearts and homes through movies and TV shows we watch, the books we read, you know, false teachings, even the people we admire. So I just want to say, stay curious, like, like the little ones, keep learning and growing and understanding and let God's word and the Holy Spirit be your guide. And I wanted to end by asking two questions that we can ponder today, this weekend. Um, if you have a journal, you can journal about them. But these two questions I want to ask are in, in what areas of your life do you tend to struggle with childishness? Well, that's hard to say. So in what areas of your life do you tend to struggle with childishness? And then I want you to think about in what ways are you making progress with childlikeness? Just take a little inventory um, and ponder those things today. Okay? Awesome. Well, I'm going to um, end with prayer. Um, so please um, pray with me here. Heavenly Father, uh, help us to develop a trust and a faith in you that reflects the simplicity of childlike faith. And, and help us to examine our hearts and see if we have maybe become lukewarm towards the things of you and renew in us a childlike spirit of awe and wonder so that we can once again, marvel at the wonder of who you truly are. You know, draw us, please draw us closer into deeper intimacy with you, Lord. And I also want to pray for those who are sick and battling sickness, Lord. I just want to ask that you put your healing hand upon them and that you fill them up with peace and um, help them to know that you are always with them and always by their side. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys. Well, thank you for spending your early morning with me. Um, I don't know how long that lasted. Oh, about 15 minutes. Hey, that's good. I'm usually quick and to the point and done. So anyway, thanks for spending your early Saturday morning with me. And I don't know about you, but I'm going to go back to bed and take a nap. All right. Have a good day. I'll see you all tomorrow.